another week in the world of AI, another chaotic week. But dude, what did I watch? I saw something explode on Twitter yesterday. It blew my mind. But before we get into it, uh, sorry about the camera quality today, by the way. My main cameras are, have got some problem. But let's get into it. Uh, so yeah, play intro and then we'll get right into it. You guys want to see this? Bro, Avi Shiffman raised two million dollars in seed. I forget what it was seed. And apparently, he spent one point eight million of it buying the domain name friend.com to basically launch a like a even more basic. It looks like it looks like the uh, Echo Echo the small Amazon Echo, but with AI capability built into it, which the small Amazon Echo is going to have any day now. Uh, yeah, two, uh, $2 million. Do you think it was worth it? First, let me tell you the entire drama. So there was a rap song. Do you know there was a rap? Did you know there was a rap? There was a competitor to Avi. There's some other guy who apparently claimed he came up with the word friend first. It was his idea. Then no, 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 Avi no, 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 no. I've, I've done an awful job. Please, you explain it. What the fuck is this? Yeah, so, so apparently this guy, Avi, wanted to make a wearable. There was another guy that also wanted to make a wearable. Apparently, they were friends or something. And they both named it friend. One was open source. This guy had made it not so open source. And then eventually when Avi came out with his product, the other guy started made a rap song on the internet saying, how can you steal my thing or whatever? And then Avi's like, no, screw you. It's my market. You know, you can all buzz off. So I have no idea what's going on, right? It just seems like a bunch of kids that are fighting. But then the move that he made was he spent $1.8 million on a payment plan, on a domain, which to be very honest, that's the one part of this I can get behind because if you're in a very commoditized market the where, where everyone can sort of build this for nothing, uh, the only right move is to buy a domain and make a great ad. Uh, I think it's a good move. I think marketing wise, you would agree. I think today's day, everyone can make products, but getting users on the products is damn hard. Uh, and what, what do you think the play is, which is to have, which is to hack SEO, which is people, everybody searching for AI friend, He's going to find this. So I don't know if you noticed this, Tanmay. Now, I think everyone's shitting on everything that comes out. Everyone's just abusing everything. Like, there's literally nothing you can ship today. Even a good thing people are saying wrong, bad things about. So Avi's learned how to sort of take advantage of the haters, right? He's like, haters are anyway going to share and talk nonsense. Might as well make something where they can actually share and hate and whatever, right? And this got like 21 million views. I don't think you can purchase 21 million views for $1.8 million. So whatever it is, it paid off. And the haters just don't get it or they've never done marketing at scale. But having a top level domain, having a friend.com domain is a big deal. Uh, and the ad was, I thought, like, I didn't even watch the whole ad, but I thought it was good. Like, I thought it'll, it'll trigger emotion. I'm pretty, I thought the ad was kind of garbage. But I thought, uh, but I think you can flip friend.com for more than 1.8 billion. I, I think that domain name is extremely useful. Yeah. But uh, long term, I have no idea. Like if this works, like there's a, two options, right? Either the product works or it doesn't. If it works, bro, Apple's going to do it, right? And so is Samsung and Google, literally every top player in the market. So, and, and also you own nothing here, right? Like the model is somebody else's, um, you know. I, I don't see how there's a business here. I see how it's a great marketing campaign. And if Avi had gone and worked at OpenAI or some great company and done this sort of marketing campaign, it would have done really well for them. But right now, like, I mean, the question I had and the, qu the reason we didn't build, this is a fairly trivial problem to solve, but the reason we didn't build it is like, what is the market for this? Who's going to pay for it? Sure, I would use it, but the minute it started working, like even if you sold like 10,000 units, bam, Apple comes out with their version or Google comes out with their version or Samsung comes out with their version. So you don't want to waste so much time. It's hardware, you'll have refunds, you'll have issues. It's not worth the, the fight, right? And the wisdom, I think, comes with age. But when you're young, I think Avi's fairly young, right? Even the other guy was fairly young. But it made for great Twitter drama, right? As much as it is, like as much as people are calling him arrogant and this and that, I'm actually rooting for him because I'm like, at least someone's trying something, right? And it's good to see someone trying something. They entertain us doing all of this. And at the same time, there's new products and services in the world that even if it fails, we get to learn something from, no? Yeah. I mean, what do yeah. you think? I, first of all, I'm, I'm almost very certain that the product doesn't work as well as the ad. Of course. It's just, it's just not as good. Uh, even though I think, even though I think all the demos, all the videos I've seen of um, uh, ChatGPT voice is actually very, very good. Uh, so if it gets close to that, that's, that's pretty good. Um, 
I don't think it's as easy as I don't think see when people say that oh Google could just launch a feature and kill this or oh, Apple could just launch launch and kill it by that logic like any innovation or any shot that people take in hardware but that has proven out to be true like in hardware almost everything even the rings for example right for a period of time aura and ultra human were the only ring providers samsung now has a ring right so they will come if, if there's a big market they'll come but you could have a few years of free hits basically but i'm not sure man everything's moving so fast today like if there's a market if there's no, user but that adoption. that attitude that attitude is you just can't innovate with that attitude that hey can i not try something just cuz i think that someday apple will this thing i think if you do something really well the likelihood of i don't know i'd rather be optimistic and think that you'll get acquired at the very least yeah that's a possible path yeah if you go in thinking that yo this is just something that apple's going to eventually do google's going to eventually do that's going to get you nowhere that's also just not true like um like a lot of times a lot of times what happens is i've had friends work at really big companies like in india like giant e-commerce companies or you know fintech companies where very often they'll keep hearing of hearing that google is coming after your market and google stuff is like that. yeah they'll they'll hear of that but also like that the m and a team in the company will be like uh, hey we're looking at acquiring this small company because they have this thing that could be really useful to us and the cto hmm. eventually always says that yo no we can build this internally but there is limited engineering bandwidth you're not yeah. always going to be able to allocate the engineers to build the stuff that you could sometimes it's just cheaper to acquire so i don't think it's futile to think of building stuff even if it's in hardware no there's a slight difference between software and hardware here in software it's a little hard for google to do let's say what a figma does or whatever an adobe to do what a figma does because figma is always continuously iterating with hardware it's the cycles are so slow that you have time to catch up right that's the only difference and also over the years we have learned that these large companies have so much might right they've got factories they can just get the fab up and running quickly it's they also have advantages that are not there with software software ultimately everyone's on an even playing field right even if you have tooling lots of tooling is open source so you can pick it up like i don't think there's going to be any differentiation on this friend versus any other device ka software like what's running on it i don't think there's going to be any differentiation but i think these players competing against each other when you go take a hardware fight with somebody like a samsung you have to be careful because samsung also comes with reli- reliability refunds the bank balance but that all being said like i said i'm still rooting for this guy i think anyone trying anything new especially the harder it is i think our default state should not be to shit on it and I, the internet is now become a place where you do anything people will shit on you anything you move the people shit on you no no so, in general net net i agree that hey that you know uh why hate the why hate the player for playing the game it's fine let 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 people yeah. try things uh by the way i think we should play the ad because we've spoken about it for a while but for people to we should actually play it um because you know any attempt is an attempt i just want to breath so we made it woo <laughs> I don't know how to woo very good. That's fair. All right, let's go. Let me show you how to game, bro, okay? Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, let's go. Are you serious? Come on, man. I hate this game. Take notes, baby. Oh, man, you guys suck, bro. You look Let's go. Let's go. Dude, what? How did you do? I know the effects are crazy. It's dank. I could eat one of these every day. Oh, sorry, I got you messy. It's really nice up here. How'd you find this place? I don't know. I just. I kind of like to come up here to be by myself. I've never brought anybody else. I mean, besides her. She goes everywhere with you, right? Mm-hmm. Guess I must be doing something right, though. I guess so. We'll see. I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not MKBHD. I have no intention of killing this guy's company. 
So what, what do you what do you actually think of that? MKBHD commented on his post. Did you see the comment where he said, uh, "I I promise I'll give it a fair shot" or whatever like that, right? Um, what what do you think about the MKBHD effect now in hardware tech, where MKBHD makes a review about you and then you don't have a business anymore? The MKBHD thing are slightly more nuanced. Okay, hmm. I understand his I understand his point of view. that hey i am someone if he has an opinion people tend to spend money on it so i got to be honest to my audience i get that right mm. but dude i also make content so i know he didn't need to title the humane pin video as the worst product i've ever reviewed for now there's just no reason to title that like mm. you can you can have a negative opinion about a product without being obvious fucking clickbait this is what i think like there's no mm. i th- i think he 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 knows what he's doing he knows that this title is going to get him 8 million views or whatever it's gotten uh and he did that what he did not realize was that it would lead to it would lead to the company getting trashed so hard um mm. what i would be curious about is to see what happened to sales of the human ai pin i'm sure it crashed i'm, I'm sure it crashed i mean actually we don't know we, we sometimes the streisand effect yeah i think the streisand effect could happen Uh, mm-hmm. which is the reverse of what marquez wants which is that i don't want people to spend money on a bad product but when you see what the hype is about people tend to buy it so i would i wouldn't be surprised if um, if something like that also were to happen curious question here do you do you think do you think marquez is on a slight power trip does it appear like that from from a distance as a creator no i don't think he's on a power trip i think yeah he, he's not cocky or he's not he's not like out there being like oh i can destroy companies no i think he's relatively very very well balanced and mm. also i've been seeing marquez since he was like a baby right like he literally was 14 when he started his youtube channel or something like something really young like that mm. uh, so i really think the dude loves his tech and i think he's very passionate about it i do think he's the most powerful tech journalist in the world right now mm. but i also think that there is enough competition that doesn't that can't let him go to like that can't make him feel like this mad Awful. god complex cuz like mr who's the boss is right next to him you know mm. there's there's enough people who are in the same league as him who are mm. getting as many views as him who will get the same invite as him the same products will go to everybody else the same treatment that he gets a couple of other people will also get so he's not alone at the top there's a couple of guys who are at the top which makes it good which keeps everybody honest i only have one gripe i feel i felt like in the spectrum of things of course i haven't used the humane pin when the spectrum of things i think the apple vision pro should have got a worse review like if you really think about it i mean everyone any consumer would know right it's so expensive and how many times have have we used it like three times four times like it was pretty obvious the first time i used it that this is going to be a once in a blue moon use right like it's the same with the quest or any of the other vr devices but if you look at that review versus the review of let's say the humane pin i felt the tone with which apple was handled was with a very different tone than which any other company has handled i'm not i'm not claiming anything i'm just saying that as a as a viewer as a consumer of his content it just felt like why would you treat apple so differently from a humane i mean you would treat apple differently from humane cuz it's apple right like um, i don't i don't that's yeah. my point yeah but that makes sense it it would make sense when when you know six six times a year apple is going to do something that is super critical for your business as well mm. you're not going to want to rock the boat but i think marquez would marquez has been the thing is marquez speaks about apple so much through the year mm. that there is a decent amount of criticism that comes apple's way also like like he's spoken about apple copying features actually the apple copying features thing has been something that he's like he's spoken about for years now where now that opinion has evolved into actually i saw a video of him recently saying uh it became like maybe it's a good thing that people copy because it's good for us as consumers and now mm. i think there was recently uh, someone launched a watch which is exactly like the apple watch and he's like maybe it's now not a bit in that phase where it's not good to copy anymore so mm. i don't i don't think he will mm. ever be as harsh about apple because apple just dominates so much of the conversation that it's impossible for anything to seem harsh because the criticism just keeps leaking through regularly hmm interesting oh yeah but he did marquez did put up that clip about like he did he put up a clip about tim cook speaking about magic mouse which i thought was like 
it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a harsh review Good but clip. it was like a yo bro like come on like this is the worst thing apple has ever done like how do you charge this mouse like come on yeah interesting let's move on so the next thing is just so you know there was a ubi study done sam altman did a 45 million dollar ubi experiment there were 3000 participants there was either thousand dollars or fifty dollars monthly payments the duration was up to five years location was in texas and illinois age ranges between 21 to 40 target was low income households which is below 300 percent of poverty level right uh so here's how the money was used uh here's how the people use the money and we're going to show a graph right now so basic needs healthcare, transportation education financial support for others so let's see and what the impacts of this ubi study were i think it's very important because if AI someday, five years, 10 years later, takes away jobs or 20 years later takes away jobs, then uh, the government has to give some universal basic income, some stipend to you to live your life. How did people use that money today in this study? And what can we as Indians learn from it? Uh, I think it's, it might be pretty interesting to go through this. Number one is I think there was a 2% decrease in employment likelihood. So that's 1.3 fewer work hours per week on average. So people worked slightly less when they got free money, right? Although it's not as low as I thought it would be. I thought it, uh, it's not as high as I thought it would be. I thought it'd be like 50% decrease, decrease in people going to work or whatever, but it's just a minimal tilt in reduced work. What do you think of that? So, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking that actually, actually that's kind of, it's, it is kind of, hmm, I don't know if I'm super surprised because in America, it depends on who is getting the thousand dollars is it someone who's already making a bunch of more money? Is it? It really depends. Uh, but I think it's net net. Yeah, I agree with you. I, th I thought that if you're getting, if you're getting uh, enough money to cover your basic needs, then people would want to work lesser. Like this decrease is like how much I decrease my work when it's just like nice weather outside. You know, like like I didn't think that UBI would have the same effect as hey, good weather. Uh, if it's raining in Mumbai, I feel like not working. That's surprising. What's the next st stat here? There's like a huge reduction in stress. There's improved nutrition, so people ate better, of course. And a lot of people spent time in pursuit of education. So they actually spent money to go learn new stuff. Hmm. It kind of feels like AI propaganda right now. <laughs> this <study>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't believe it. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's feeling a little like Oh, if we all if we all don't work and just get free money, things would be better. We should just use ChatGPT <laughs> more for everything. Uh, <laughs> but okay, it's interesting. I didn't know. By the way, he conducted this over five years for the last five years. Yeah, he he did. He started this many many years ago. It was it started in 2016 actually. He, that was when the idea came out, and the pilot started in 2020. The fifty dollars group was a control group, so. They were just like, they were not checking for that, but they were checking whether $1,000 changes your life. And it turns out it does. It improves all of these facets, but I don't believe any of it because if you give 20,000 rupees to every Indian, let's say as UBI. If, if you, you give 20,000 20, rupees to every Indian, I would immediately try and pick up stock in every real money gaming app. Every alcohol brand. <laughs> I would not think twice. I would go buy stock immediately. Dream 11. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no way there. In, uh, but okay, this is interesting. People are apparently spending it on better nutrition. Uh, stress is reduced. Cool. What else happened? The future implications of UBI was that, you know, funding sustainability. How do you get the actual money for this? Uh, potential inflation, because if you give everyone money, then, you know, the price of everything goes up. If everyone can afford something, like real estate would immediately go up if you gave everyone money, right? Like, for example, uh, political feasibility, which is... There'll be two political parties and the only thing the political parties will do is like, my UBI amount is 9,000. The other guy will be like, my UBI amount is 9,500. Nobody cares about any other policy. They only care about what is the actual check they're getting. Okay. Uh, opportunities are, of course, poverty will reduce, which is people suffering will reduce. It's obvious. Increased entrepreneurship, when you don't have to worry about your base income, you'll try new stuff. Improved mental health, uh, because you're not worried about where your check is coming from next. Concerns are work disincentives, which is... Uh, you know, why would people work if they got money? Dependency culture, they'll start depending on the government and or you or whatever. And economic disruption. Economy works when people produce good products and services 
and they are forced to kind of work to make these products and services and because of that customers pay for it and that's a virtuous cycle right so you have you make more money so you're able to spend on other products and services you disrupt the economy by short circuiting it with this money uh what do you think about ubi actually i actually have no strong opinions about it but this study is super interesting has he open sourced this study like can more people read it yeah the report is out there the do report is out it? there okay yeah uh, okay interesting okay uh, i don't have any strong i i don't have any strong opinions on it i think it was i think net net it's a cool thing that sam attempted hmm um but I, i did not think this would be the result i like the by gut instinct is that if everybody gets free money then the desire to uh work the, fizzles uh, the desire to work fizzles your dopamine addiction will go up um you would generally get more lethargic but that's cuz a large part of my desire to work is money so <laughs> maybe that's just how i feel um it's possible other people don't feel that i think this study is propaganda maybe it didn't start out as propaganda i'm very sure it didn't start out as propaganda because it started in an era where open ai was not getting attacked imagine if the results of the study was chaos or oh, nobody wanted to work anymore right after the study and it came it came out in bad light open ai wouldn't be able to to just like they, that that would take another brand hit right because of that so unfortunately that's the thing right like when a company gets too big and their financial incentives are now aligned with you know sort of uh maintaining this the, the the fact that ai is not going to disrupt too many things i think there's no incentive for them to 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 disrupt that status quo so i feel like it should have been a different body not associated with sam not associated with open ai doing this this was not associated with open ai i think this was associated with sam it should have been a different body sort of coming out and saying hey you know here's what we think of ubi but i do believe we need to do an exact same thing in india we need to do exactly this in india and You know, how much would it cost? It's probably expensive, but I think you could do this with ten thousand rupees in India across a hundred families. How much is that? Ten thousand rupees a month, maybe a lakh a year across hundred families. It, in about a crore, you could do like a sample size of a hundred people. UBI, see how that changes their life. Take people across multiple different economic economic strata. Ask them to table something. I think this is a very useful study in India, and uh, yeah, potentially Tanmay, if, you know, we we should consider doing this if 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 you feel like. if we feel maybe not now maybe after 6 months a year or something like that but i feel like nobody's done this for india and nobody has an idea of whether this would how this would change things in india and we'd actually be able to do it in an unbiased fashion no i think your bias is pretty clear to be honest no uh, <laughs> this would be a reverse, reverse chat gpt propaganda <laughs> <laughs> everything is crude no no it wouldn't be that no if 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 we feel like that then we'll outsource it to somebody else like we have to find somebody ultimately completely unbiased to be like listen i'm giving this money to people who we don't even know who those people are here are the results they fill in the results on an app later and that that data directly goes on the internet and then the internet can decide you know whether it's good bad ugly what what they think of the data etc we shouldn't even do the data analysis we should just be like here's the dry dump of the data you guys decide what you what 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 the implications of this are uh cool you do it and you tell me how it goes <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to invest that uh, one crore into a nice uh, high yielding bond and uh, high yielding <laughs> uh, real money gaming real money gaming app. <laughs> yeah, and if you could tell me exactly who are these ten uh, thousand families that you'll be helping, uh, I would love to know what app they are using <laughs> to <laughs> to kill their time. <laughs> yeah, like you'll have to do it in a in a more distinct fashion. You'll have to record their phone. Like you'll. I mean, it will be privacy invasion or whatever. But I feel like somebody has to do some study like this. Yeah, someone should. I'm. I'm actually pretty sure someone has. So Tanmay, you know how frustrating it can be to generate images with AI, right? You don't have much control over the output, and you have to switch to another program just to edit it. Like the thumbnails that we make, first we'll generate it somewhere else, then we bring it to Photoshop. It's a hassle. Dude, it is damn painful. But thankfully now you can integrate stable diffusion in Photoshop using Comfy UI. Do you know Comfy UI? It's basically yep. this like combination or uh, that allows for like real time image generation within Adobe Photoshop. So one of the things we found that th- there's this integration where you can set up a node workflow in Comfy UI and it can communicate directly with Photoshop. That gives us both worlds, right? It gives us the control that you have with Photoshop, the fine control, as well as all the AI features of Comfy UI, all the new nodes. So I'm just going to generate one and show you, okay? I'm just going to generate this. Yeah, don't just the app, okay? 
bloody do and show you see how quickly it transform that sketch and notice how you could guide the output based on our initial sketch all of this is happening in comfy first of all varun your drawing skills are really bad i just wanted to address that up top no i know but this integration opens up amazing possibilities like you can do rapid pre visualization ideation like i think a comfy photoshop bridge was something that was always missing uh, and now we can do that so for example i can even like change the clothes of a virtual model like see pretty cool right yeah that the tool is pretty cool but that skirt is awful yeah but uh, i'll tell you how this works behind the scenes so this workflow relies on lcm which is latent consistency model which just really accelerates generation time so i can do it in 3 to 5 steps i can quickly generate something i don't need to wait forever but the cool thing is that this process the hardware is running on is the intel core ultra powered processors it has a neural processing unit also known as an npu we've heard about this a lot but the npu actually makes this possible this just it makes it seamless oh, so the, that's a specialized that's a specialized chip you mentioned earlier the one that handles these like ai specific tasks the way we're able to achieve this speed is because the npu takes care of all the ai workloads while the gpu and cpu are free to tackle other intensive tasks It's this intelligent division of labor that makes everything run so smoothly. Theoretically, the GPU and NPU sort of share the workload, but in this case, the NPU kind of takes on all the heavy lifting. Dude, it's crazy that all this can just happen on a laptop now. Uh, anyway, for those who want to know more, just check out the link in the description or in our bio, and you can deep dive into the Intel uh, Core Ultra processor world. OpenAI silently killed Perplexity AI. I don't think they've killed no one. I yes, I think Sir GPT is a great product. Yeah, I think Sir GPT. Um I've seen videos of it and it looks cool. I haven't tried it yet. Let me reuse it right now. You can't you it's a waitlist. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. No, I think I think it'll be a cool product but if it's anything like if it's anything like the web browsing that tool that they had in the in GPT-4 it would suck. But at least the demos and the videos all look good and some folks who used it all say it's nice but I would just like a search engine to not be Google or Microsoft. So for mm. some reason I like You want another winner. I just want I just want another player dude. I just uh, I don't know like my needs for search are not as like I don't need AI to summarize. You know what I'm saying like I, my my needs for search are very simple like my need for search are what was name of that theater in BKC which has big seats? <laughs> <laughs> like they're very 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 simple uh, that doesn't need too much info i don't know maybe that's just me i think it's we, we are yet to see what search gpt is like i i don't know like perplexity has gotten better especially perplexity pro whenever i use it i think it's pretty useful like sometimes i use it to like if i'm if i'm taking a new medication or something like that i'll be able to quickly you know ask it okay summarize the research on it in the last 5 years what are the side effects show me papers i like the fact that it gives me references so i can click through the references and sort of figure out okay you know what is the uh, actual source behind it is it hallucinating i feel like it feels commoditized though like there's no reason this can't be in google when you do a google search right but at the same time you're right which is no one entity should have unlimited power right so it is important for google to have like a counter check and open ai is a good counter check where i would probably go to open ai and make the search i today by the way when i search i search on google i search on cloud i search on uh, chat gpt actually i use chat gpt the least i search on uh, J- uh, google uh, i search on cloud i search on perplexity i use these three things and i'll tell you one thing this is going to sound like the dumbest thing right i use perplexity because it doesn't require me to log in sometimes i'm on some different device i have too many devices now and sometimes i can just use perplexity without logging in and that is brilliant with chat gpt i still need to log in i need to do authentication i have the ub key because everyone's got but how do you this. use ai search like how are you using it so i'll give you an example right yesterday uh, you know i was trying to learn the difference between two different drugs right that, that there's this there's a medicine called tacrolimus and there's another one called methotrexate so i was trying to figure out why does one work faster you know um, you know what is the research behind it what are the side effects behind it i just dumped that question into perplexity mm. right and it gave me answers along with links and then i actually clicked through the links and uh, read through the entire so pubmed has these articles right or papers and i would go through these papers that perplexity has uh, sort of linked to so i use it like that then for example i was trying to figure out these 3d printed shoes i was looking at 3d print i don't know if you know but now shoes can be 3d printed they oh, all look like that 
yeah this is crazy let me show you it's crazy uh there's a brand called um, zeller field okay so they make 3d printed shoes and the way you do it is you send a picture of your feet like you take a they do a 3d scan of your feet with your iphone uh and then they print a shoe that perfectly fits into your feet wow that's insane yeah so everything from chappals to this thing is completely can be made with uh this thing so i was trying to figure out well if i needed to do this what's the device required uh can i do multiple colors because it seems like one of the drawbacks of this is you can only do single color printing right but i'm like bro most shoes eventually will need to be colored right and you can't do that manually so so i was trying to figure that out so perplexi is helping with that uh that's generally how i use perplexity got it that's cool we should do a series where we show how different people can different uh, people at different jobs can use it you're talking about per- perplexity oh yeah actually yeah dude i think perplexity is great for all sorts of analysts who no longer want to go to 10 different websites and get research it's th- that's the use case that's the eventual use case it's analysis work to make a slide deck to prove something to someone internally that's like 9 out of 10 money game for them and i bet if you look at who's how, who they're making money out is mostly analysts only who they're making money off uh that's my opinion and data we'll have to see have you seen live portrait no let me show you live portrait so we've done this video of tanmay but live portrait yeah how does this go What do you think? Yeah, I wish I'd never seen this. <laughs> But basically, I can drive your face with any um, with any other face, right? So I don't even need permission. Like earlier with Hagen and all, you needed permission, right? You need consent. But this is an open source tool, and this is the big problem with open source video tools, right? Or audio tools, which is now anybody can use them. The Pandora's box is open. and we are seeing a lot of this like on twitter now i'm getting very confused like i i scroll sometimes i see something and i don't know if it's fake or not there's z- zero way to verify like yesterday some boxing thing happened right where some lady uh, who is apparently not a lady and then later it found out we found out she is a lady and then she's a lady but she's got an xy chromosome the thing is we don't know anything we don't know anything right and you're just going through the feed and everyone's sitting and making character judgments saying this person is bad this person is evil no 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 this person is right and we're like bro we have no data we don't have the person's birth certificate we know nothing and yet people are there are millions of views of people getting angry about something or the other with with tech like this it's so easy for me to just show something tanmay saying something and then everyone's arguing about it even though you never said it and nobody will care whether you didn't say it or not even if you say it's false that video is still going to get views there's still going to be text on it like yeah there's still going to be comments on it like people now are believing whatever reality they want to believe yeah everyone's biases are going to be more ai is going to make ev- make everybody have more confirmation bias to whatever it is that they al- already believe uh you know the phrase uh, bros before hoes like tweets before facts like that's just how the world works now it's called post truth trump mm-hmm. invented it back in the day in 20 whatever 2018 20 or be- even before that um so yeah this we've actually been living in this world and i have a, for a I while have, for a while and i think the day that yeah the day retweets were invented the day it became easy for you to get likes and clout online is the day that everything changed then the second level leveling up to that was the day that your replies or comments on posts started getting likes like i remember facebook introduced comment liking which means people start people posting get... people start posting what they think other people will agree with and that changed how individual thought and that changed the game altogether that increased hate net net so i think the worst two features to be invented were retweets which is number of tweets um like i th- i prefer back in the day where you could quote retweet something because uh then you were forced to add like some sort of your opinion on top of it i don't know there was just a little bit more cognitive effort but the day you start adding likes on people's comments is when everything just got dramatically worse dude i'll tell you it's not just a twitter problem it's a everywhere problem on reddit there was this one comment about achina my wife okay she runs uh, av there was this comment that said this lady is an nri she doesn't even live in india right and she's sitting and giving gyan and this is said as a statement there were like 100 likes on it 
okay and everyone's like yeah uh, how can they sit in india and gatekeep bro it's called gatekeeping whatever there like 10 comments on it right and i was just like wait you just you just lied straight up and everyone's liked the lie and people are commenting and acting like the lie is true and i'm like bro she lives in india she lives in bloody <laughs> right so <laughs> so uh, uh, how what do you do like defamation doesn't work you can't you can't go to court anymore because it's just like a painful process the other side doesn't have any money it's just pointless so what do you do so i feel like it doesn't matter like in fact there's a guy on twitter i follow nowadays who just lies about every like he just tells a post truth thing he's just like now there are armies are fighting with drones and he'll put like a picture of drones and he'll be like indian army has moved to drones and he puts pictures and everyone's commenting saying yeah this that i'm like but he's just straight up and i just follow him to see is there anyone who calls him out on his bullshit nobody nobody bothers because what you have limited time in a day why would you go and argue with everyone who's varun you are like you are like 5 years late on this phenomenon 5 <laughs> years late it's cuz you have gotten famous in the last like 12 to 18 months so you are <laughs> now dealing with this it this it's my this is i have been whining about this for more than 5 years saying yo no one speaks the truth anymore mainstream media just blatantly lies and now anyone can lie and that becomes mainstream news Yeah I saw this one video of Ganesh Ganesh talking to Ganesh from Think School talking to somebody and they've changed the entire words to have him and I think Shashi Tharoor to have him saying riz gya something like that <laughs> that meme is quite funny okay did you know that again talking about mkbht uh, mkbht has said that runway ai has been stealing data from youtube it was trained on youtube videos without permission uh, including 1600 mkbht videos what do you think even Suno and Yudio, I think the big music uh, universals of the world have come out and said, "Yo, how can you train on our artist data? Where do you, where do you see this going? This has been going on for a while. Where do you see this going?" It's so. How else are they supposed to train? I mean, they can train on non-copyrighted data, but they're training on YouTube. It turns out they're training on YouTube data. Yeah, but non-copyrighted data is uh, not as good. <laughs> yeah, you'll have a bad model. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So what do you what are you gonna do? I don't know dude it's got to come to a point where either you got to start paying for your training data or we just got to live with it one of these two has to happen but like I'm not surprised anymore that they're using uh, copyright data to train there's no way these models are getting so good without using copyright data there's no way I'm in putting Thanos eating vada pav at Andheri station and getting fucking Thanos eating vada pav at Andheri station without them training fucking thanos and vada pavs and andheri station <laughs> yeah vada pav andheri station i can imagine them having non copyright material you're not getting thanos without non copyright material so mm-hmm. uh, but do i want thanos eating vada pav at andheri station yeah i want it i'm okay <laughs> with it i as a user do not give a fuck about how they train i as creator give many fucks about how they train how do you feel if somebody trains on your data today just just don't make me say shit that is bad for both you and me bro like <laughs> um but yeah it's it is scary but i feel like uh, you know if i was sharukh khan i'd be more scared if i was yeah so in the relative uh, scale of being scared i feel like i'm okay but mm-hmm. you know after all of this stuff all we really got was modi ji singing you know bikharne ka mujhko have you seen that video Modi ji singing bikharne ka mujhko is so funny. I think I think eventually a lot of artists and creators will protect their voice. They'll they'll take some legal action. And see last year everyone was figuring out the tools were new. Everyone's making tutorials. Everyone's trying to figure out. Everyone nobody knew what the implications of this are. But I think after a few lawsuits go through people will understand what the implications are. There'll be some season this is sent out. I think everything will get normalized. Like even as creators right we've also evolved over the years to be like okay this is what we can and cannot do in your early days any new early industry you don't know what you can and cannot do so i think the norms will come out over time and i think at, at least in india i think you know training on other people's data will become legal issues whether there's going to be a resolution of the legal issues no idea but they will become there will be issues running around on this because as a artist or a creator this all you have right like your identity your face your this or that which other people are using uh, ind- independently uh which last year everyone's figuring out models were bad now the models are starting to get good so i think there will be some guidelines around this somebody some some legal entity will come out and put some guidelines around this the only problem is if there's some company sitting in china using your youtube data from india are you going to go sue them 
right? So that is the concern, which is actually in a way by preventing people from using copyrighted content. Um, I think you shoot your own country in the foot. If you're in the US and you prevent all other American companies from training on YouTube data, you basically just giving the keys to China to do it. Because YouTube is not going to sue China or, or whoever's doing it in China, right? Some small company in China. It's too hard. The location difference makes sure the lawsuit never actually translates into anything. Uh, or it could be some people in some random this thing. So you're giving them the better model because you're allowing them to train on copyrighted data. This is one of those things where maintaining copyright necessarily means your country and your companies in your country fail. It's weird, but it's how it is in AI. Yeah, agreed. Um, please don't fuck around with my face. <laughs> okay, let's do the last one. Uh, Llama 3.1 is now fully competitive with GPT-40 and Claude. It's completely open source, runs on your computer. The human evaluation shows that Llama 3.1 wins about 23% of the time. There's a tie about 52% of the time. And there's a loss about 24.5% of the time versus GPT-4, which is fantastic. We have an open source model that runs, that you can run locally. Sure, you need some computing resources, but it runs locally. And it's competitive with the best models out there. What do you think? Llama, I, versus, I don't... Llama versus Claude? What is this? Llama versus Claude, Llama versus GPT, all of it. Like it's it's almost at least according to the uh, the the evals, they're almost equal. Uh, personally, I don't think it matters. Like one U-turn I've done is like, does a local open source model matter so much? I don't think it does. It's just gotten so cheap to do this online with a Claude or a even a like the smaller GPTs now. Where does it really matter if you're able to run it locally? You can fine tune online also if you want to with some of these models, right? Like, does it really matter if you run it locally? The context windows online are larger. You can get it from any PC. You don't need powerful compute. Uh, but at the same time, you know, if the models continue to get better and the laptops and PCs continue to get better, maybe you'll save on a subscription. So both angles are there. What do you think? I know you'll never use a Llama 3.1, right? Like considering that Claude and GPT are available for you. Dude, can I just say I'm such a Zuck simp right now? Like, holy shit, like absolute giga chad, just giving stuff away for free. Like I, yeah, I would vote for, if I was American, I would want Zuck as president right now. As he also wants himself as president, as his email to Peter Thiel revealed. Um yeah, which is crazy. Uh, what he's what he's doing. Did you see Zuck's statement about, you know, how earlier he, you know, he was really young and he was running such a massive company and how he didn't know what public perception is like, so he wasn't very good. And now he's kind of coming into his own skin about it, kind of getting comfortable with it. And the transformation is amazing, and I'm all here for it. Actually, it's nice to see. And also, Zuck has been one of those people where it's always been post truth, right? Like. To be very honest, how much do we really know about Zuck? All the news articles, all the twi tweets, all the Reddit posts about Zuck over the last decade. Who knows? Now we're learning that everything is, is fake, right? Like I am learning now that, like you said, right? Like now I'm getting to scale. I'm also learning, oh shit, like half the shit said is false. But Zuck never had a, like, I'm surprised Zuck never went out and said, bro, this is fake. Right over the last ten years, maybe his PR team told him, "Don't, don't, don't touch it because it's don't engage, no don't bother thing. engaging." Yeah, hmm. but I think that's the wrong attitude. And now that Zuck is coming out and just being himself, and he's like, "Yo, I'm actually a chill, normal dude, not a reptile." And then we can see it. We're like, "Oh wait, we were lied to about the reptile thing for forever, right?" <laughs> I mean, I know the reptile thing is a joke, but you you know what I'm saying. Good for him, dude. And also, nice one, Lama. Congrats. Open source, good. Congrats to everyone. Good to have competition. But also kind of scary. Everyone can have one one at home. Lovely. I think this is a great video. Uh, we got some great reels out of this, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, guys. That's for today's episode. Enjoy the Olympics. Enjoy them. See you next time. <laughs> Bye.